today in Boggy Bottom Zoo, we are going to be making a beautiful little habitat for our hoofstock friends that we recently got with the latest Wetlands Animal Pack DLC. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to get started with these guys. So I already want to jump right in and make a rice terrace. And you guys can kind of see, I kind of did that off camera. Uh, I essentially just use a mix of eelgrass, maybe a little bit triordia grass just to get some like drier kind of looking strands in there and i'm kind of lining it up with these beautiful wood logs and kind of making it feel like it's kind of built into the landscape and whatnot uh so before i even get in any further with the commentary welcome oh my gosh welcome everyone to another happy little episode of boggy bottom zoo hope you guys are all having wonderful days so far hope you guys are enjoying all the other speed builds that not just me but all my fellow content creators are putting out i can already see some beautiful ones put out by my good friend beyond drew tv i can see some beautiful ones out by savannah caesar creates rudy's been doing some pretty cool stuff too it's just a really awesome time all around and it's so great to see so many creators especially like thrive and stuff really coming back and hitting the ground running with like all these beautiful new animals this is exactly what i'm saying animal packs i know they're not really my favorite i always do love getting new props specifically but animal packs always just bring in this beautiful rush of creativity and that's especially what i'm doing right here so already you can see me start to do a lot more of the infrastructure of this build it's nothing really to focus on the habitat itself we do get into like a lot more um how you say a lot more landscaping later down the line that's not really the focus of this build in particular this time around i really wanted to focus on infrastructure and that being i really want to have this beautiful semi filipino inspired kind of habitat um while these animals really aren't native to the philippines in fact i don't think the nile letray is found anywhere in asia don't even begin to ask me why i threw this guy in here he's just gonna be making best friends with our buffalo over here Either way, I was very inspired by classic, wooden, very traditional Filipino architecture, and that's exactly what we do with our viewing galleries, and it looks so incredible at that. I um, hope you guys are also already appreciating the blueprint that I put out, because I do a lot more work on that over this episode and the next one. The next one isn't finished yet, but it's probably going to be one of my favorite habitats, or multiple habitats, because it spans over three different enclosures. You guys will all see that when it actually does come out relatively soon but yeah that's essentially what we're working with today we have a lot of awesome things happening in here and i cannot wait for you guys to enjoy this all so what i'm kind of doing over here to begin with i really wanted to close off the bottom of that viewing gallery a lot of the times in ways to keep out more things and keep stuff in we want to kind of close off that section of the viewing gallery very much like what we did with the platypus habitat and we kind of do the same thing over here and essentially what we're doing right now is kind of making this beautiful centerpiece for our viewing galleries but what i did before that i completely just talked over was using our mesh pieces to create a little bit of an underbrush area this would be where you know your reeds would grow some weeds and stuff like that it's just a really good way to integrate natural foliage into your habitat and not make it look too obstructive because it's right under where the guest walks it's where like you know your dirt and grime kind of grow and that's exactly why i like to include in some of my builds like that now we should probably talk about this uh again this is very much based off of traditional filipino wooden architecture and i was having so much fun with these it was just such a fun project just to come in here and kind of build for it. I'm getting very, very comfortable with doing a lot more stylized builds, a lot more unique roofs and stuff like that. So that's exactly what I really wanted to hammer on with right here. And you can see me start to experiment with some kind of like, you know, backgrounds up there, but I actually do settle on it being not filled up by anything because in the end, it really does look so good. And just having those uh, wooden planter walls up there, it just really didn't look too good. It, in fact, kind of made it feel a lot more bulky than I originally wanted it to look like. And that's not just because I have those giant East Asia pillars right there. No, I, I really want to have it feel a lot more open air, open concept and whatnot. So we do end up doing that in just a little bit. I was having a little bit of troubles with the beams, but I kind of do get that all said and done with. Uh, and here I go, actually working on the roof over here. So again, this is probably 
probably one of the hardest things about capturing beautiful Asian architecture in Planet Zoo. It's the roofing. Uh, a lot of the times, the normal pieces don't really cut it, and you actually have to get in there with your bare hands and really do some beautiful custom works when it comes to all that stuff. So here I am using another tried and true trick of using those liana vines, I think those are what they're called, uh, as a way to kind of make a new kind of thatch. Uh, the current thatch in-game really doesn't jive with my style anymore. It's very bright, not only like the African one, but the South American one as well. We thought that one was the hottest shit around at first. But no, it's not. It's not the good. It's not the best at all. No. Um, so kind of just going through this all and making our actual holding. Uh, this was another thing I really want to have as well. Implied holding. Again, this is probably not the most realistic zoo. In fact, it is not in the slightest. But I really did just want to have like a nice big building where, you know, the hoofstock could go when it is quite inclement weather or if they do need to be kept inside. So I have this big spacious building and again, another custom wall. Guys, I cannot stress enough how simple it is to make custom walls and how rewarding it is to have them in your zoo. Just be able to differentiate yourselves from like, you know, the rest of the crowd and doing and taking the time to actually make these custom walls. It's so useful and so worth it. And it looks so good in the end, which I think speaks for itself in droves. But moving on through here, I really just wanted to include some more beams. Uh-oh. <sighs> wow, I'm sorry again. Like I, I've read, I've been recording these speed builds way too far at night. Um, but anyways, just moving on here again. Wow, I'm sorry. I'm just, I kind of just hit a wall right there. I should probably get some more coffee. Uh, but anyways, adding those beautiful garage doors right there, and again, kind of lining them up with this beautiful wooden beam all across it just to make sure it has a little bit more security i think it looks pretty good in the end and i also really want to have this nice little concrete area where uh we would have some hay on top of maybe this is kind of built into the foundation of the rest of the building and i also really just wanted to make walls with this same building set as well uh just as a way to kind of help this area feel a little bit more secure make it feel a little bit more like it's supposed to be here and we do have these kind of sloped uh stone walls right off the side of that and it feels so much better like i love it so much it feels so clean feels so amazing it just looks great in the end but also adding those wood beams as well i haven't really used these guys all too much to begin with but i've been loving them in this entire entire zoo it's just a really fun piece to get to know i guess if that makes sense um and it's just so nice just to have these beautiful large sweeping walls <laughs> kind of containing this little rice paddy area but again i know i just said before i don't want to do custom uh, no i don't want to use the stock roofs for a building like this though i kind of caved in and i felt like yeah this is probably one of the places where you wouldn't have too much theming because while it is kind of like the center of the habitat we are able to get away with a little bit of kind of like stagnant theming that's kind of what I'll refer to this as, unfortunately. It's nothing really too crazy. But I do like kind of like the shape and slope of the roofs. And here we go with another yawn. That's great. Oh my god. Wow. Sorry, guys. Hope you guys all yawn at that too. I know it's kind of contagious. Also adding another Liana vine roof if that makes sense yeah uh and just a way to uh kind of break up the stagnation of all of those kind of clay tiles and it does look pretty good in the end uh just as a way to kind of give our buffaloes and lechways a little bit more shelter and we do kind of anchor those in on the ground with a little bit of uh support beams and we copy that all across the way with a um you know across all the other beams that we have set up over there just to help keep it feel a little bit more secure and we do double back on that back right behind there and we do have some windows looking into the habitat just in case of like you know you may have administrative offices in there you may have like you know your keepers kind of looking out in there just making sure that the animals are getting along nice and here we are to the landscaping of course starting with the small and making our way up to the large periwinkle glass 
periwinkle grass has to be some of my favorite pieces in the entire game now it's just such a beautiful and bright piece that it brings like it it really helps to bring out the eyes of the exhibit if that makes sense i know it's very much a term when you're talking about like dresses and stuff but isn't that what we're doing right here aren't we just dressing up the habitat I think we are but kind of moving our way through here and just making sure that these areas are looking nice I know why it kind of brought this up in bro nation a little bit ago where you kind of use it on the edge of grass leading and kind of bleeding into the mulch as a way to make it feel like a little bit more sparse patches and I've been doing that so much so often and it works pretty well also doing a little bit of crowberry bushes we haven't really been doing that too much in this zoo but I really do love how it looks and I kind of bring that over to the Asian small clod otter exhibit Hopefully we could actually keep that as a trend within the rest of the Asian exhibits in here just as a way to help keep like um You know help keep the same kind of vibes from habitat to habitat at least in the sections themselves And we also do use a hydrilla grass as well just to help keep it a little bit more um You know cohesive with the rest of the zoo itself I would call that the glue that keeps the rest of the zoo together and we also add a nice polyepsis bush here and there just to help keep it feeling like it needs a little bit more mid-tier foliage. And also the reeds. Just getting that beautiful palette. Always work with palettes. Even if you guys put them down before you actually do start building your zoo or your habitats. It gives you such a good idea and a good basis of where to actually base your um, zoo in. And how to use your foliage to your advantage. And also adding some of those uh, plants right below the pathway. Again, as I said before. And also moving the rest of our buffalo and latch ways into the exhibit I had a little bit of problems with that but I kind of do cut that off and I also kind of block up this area up here so that the latch ways and the buffaloes are not able to escape we don't want them climbing through the rice paddies I think the latch ways are actually able to access the uh, rice paddies which is kind of fun uh, you wouldn't really have them kind of like going up there anyways because that is probably not most sanitary and plus they would just eat it all because they are pretty much browsers and grazers. I don't really know the difference between them. Really sorry, guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> but moving our way through here. Identifying our first spot for our next habitat speed build. You guys can probably guess what I'm so excited about. I talked about it in a few videos before. But I'm so excited for that. It's already turning out so nice. I can't wait for you guys to see it. But decorating the ex outside of the exhibit right now again as i've kept on saying before the outside of the exhibit is equally as important as the inside of the exhibit it just helps to really ground your zoo and it's those areas in between that i often find myself often find myself loving to build for the most and it's just so fun just help build a backdrop for your zoos just because it helps it feel so much more complete than it actually is like when i go and tour throughout um boggy bottom it's just so interesting just to see how beautiful it's been coming out and how amazing it feels just to say that we made it this far in a zoo by the way oh my god i know i mentioned this in the mod showcase like a couple days ago but i do need to extend like a generous thank you to everyone recently who's been joining the channel uh you guys are literally the best again i know i said this before but i've been having a little bit of a crappy week as of late nothing really the best happened but listen it's because of you guys that i still have a smile on my face you guys are doing so wonderful in the comments down below i keep on seeing so many new viewers and it's because of you guys why i'm so freaking happy about it because it's so great just to have like this new influx of people join our little leaf pile and you know what i'm just happy that you guys are here even if you guys are just here for the dlc i'm just happy you guys are still here but Anyways, moving our way through here, making our kind of like blueprint for our fence. And you can probably see me in just a little bit copy this over to our blueprint pile. And there we go, right there. That's where I'm keeping all the blueprints for you guys. So you guys can already check out on my workshop. Uh, the work the workshop link may or may not be in the description if you guys just look me up on the workshop i'm sure you guys can find me but essentially what i am setting up are just these collective blueprints for all you guys for you guys to honestly use in your own zoo we've been using like a bunch of them from the japanese set we've been having a lot from the asia set and i will do a bunch from the australia set once i actually do get to there 
But yeah, that's all pretty much all said and done over there. And yeah, that's pretty much it for our speed build today. I do a little bit of work in between now and the actual cinematic, so I do apologize that I wasn't able to capture that, but it really wasn't the coolest thing in the world. Probably just a little bit of scenery and little touch-ups here and there. But this was wicked fun to put together, guys. I cannot thank you guys enough for stopping by. I know this really isn't the sexiest habitat in the world. I know it's just for hoofstock, but hoofstock are probably some my favorite animals to actually go visit in zoos and it's just really awesome to build for them but yeah that's pretty much it check that out view oh my god that's so nice but yeah that's pretty much it i love this sweeping shot right here again just seeing all of our friends together it's so nice and seeing the sleepy little buffalo right there and look at that architecture back there but all right i'm gawking over myself too much over here i gotta calm down uh thank you guys so much for watching it's always a treat to have you guys here. In case if you guys are new, be sure to hit that little subscribe button. I know it's so annoying to hear a content creator constantly shove that in your face, but it really does help me out and it really does make me happy. But yeah, in case if you guys are new here, let me know. Love seeing you guys pop up, but you know what? I've overstayed my welcome. Enjoy the rest of the cinematics. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and have the most wonderful, wonderful days. Bye-bye now.